Okay, this is a piano update for your story and Clark. So uh, the piano was extremely flat today, uh, like a half step flat. So the instrument's definitely going to need more than one tuning. It needs to settle for about three weeks. The soundboard of the piano is a crown. On an upright, it's pushing out like a belly. On a grand, it's like an arched ceiling. It's a little further back so you can see this. It's uh, like an arched ceiling. So the crown of the soundboard is designed to be under a very specific down bearing. So we've got all these strings exerting down bearing on this curve. When the piano hasn't been tuned in a long time, the down bearing is in insufficient, and then the crown of the soundboard sits in an exaggerated fashion, or in your case, kind of further forward than we want. And then as I'm tuning, I'm applying down bearing pressure to one area of that crown, and as it compresses, as I'm, it floats on me as I'm moving more notes and increasing the down bearing. So it's going to take about three weeks for that down bearing change to really settle across the instrument. And that's totally normal. Most of the change is going to occur on the D5 octave, going in and coming out of the D5 octave. The wires are cross-strung and they reinforce each other. The bass and the mid-range section both push down relatively on the same part of the soundboard. And then suddenly there's no reinforcement and we've got these really short wires going into the high end. So it's the area of least resistance on the crown of the soundboard. The crown of the soundboard also um, swells and contracts seasonally. So over the summer it swells and in the winter it uh, deflates uh, off gases. So as far as timing in the year, we're in the right location because the wood is going to swell as the moisture returns to the air. It would be more of an uphill battle to try to do this going into winter. You do have a wood stove in very close proximity to the instrument and so that is a bit of a hostile environment for a piano, um, but it is Vermont, and the piano also, I believe your wife said, came from Maine. So, I mean, it's seen winter before. Um, and then you have the hearthstone stove, which is generally not as dry as a full cast iron. So um, the piano is a good candidate for a system called the damp chaser, which is spelled damp -p -p chaser with two Ps. And it keeps the piano at 41% humidity year-round. It's an internal humidity control system. Um, for your guitars, you may have like a damp it, which is like a, you know, a little plastic shield with a sponge hanging from it that you put in the guitar to keep moisture in the, in the wood. Um, and it's a similar but digital version of that. By far, that's the most kind of expensive one big ticket item to throw at this piano. You could spend $550 installing one parts and labor. There are other ways to humidify the instrument. So the piece of wood in front of your knees when you're playing is called the front door. And there is a friction spring here that you push up and the door will lean out. And in all that free real estate down there and over there, those flat areas, you can put mason jars. And that's the old wives trick for keeping moisture in the instrument. So when the heat is on in the winter, you put mason jars with water in there and it evaporates just into the instrument. You won't get the instrument to 41%, but it's better than doing nothing. And a hygrometer, you know, from Radio Shack or um, Amazon, just to tell you what's the relative humidity in the air is a really good idea. Um, so because winter is the hostile season, you don't have to make up your mind about installing a damp chaser or not until we get into next autumn. So there's quite a while to budget for it. The piano will hold its tuning for longer and it will essentially freeze time for the piano. One other reason the piano is a good candidate for the damp chaser is that you have tender tuning pins. So these are the tuning pins and we only see the end of them. There's another two inches of them uh, that are driven into the pin block. And the pin block is rock maple going in a bunch of different directions. So you could have this amazing piece of lumber and then you drill holes in it and start jamming the tuning pins in and it's just going to crack along the grain. So the pin block is always going in different directions so that the pin is always met by end grain. Tenderness in the tuning pin means that uh, some of those laminations of the pin block have started to get fine cracks in them and enough of them have deteriorated that when we move the pin it's having a hard time holding in some occasions. And again, we're going into summer so we're, we're the wood is going to swell of the pin block as well, so we're not going to have that symptom. 
Um, and by no means is humidification the only way to address tender tuning pins. There is um, a super thin super glue called CA glue, which can be applied where the pin meets the plate and capillary action draws it in. It's not expensive, it's not time consuming, it is a little smelly because it's an epoxy. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, when we tune, you know, in three weeks after this is settled, we'll, we're going to start marking tuning pins with chalk, and those are the ones that feel more tender to me as I'm moving them. But we're not going to do anything about them right away. We just want to notice that they're there. And then as we see the piano annually, we'll treat them with the super thin super glue so that they can, um, you know, get better tension. The glue's not strong enough to glue anything in place, but the capillary action draws the glue into the pin block. And then when you move the pin next time, the glue flakes get jammed into the cracks in the pin block. Um, so of the major components, pin block, soundboard, bridge, the pin block's the only one that's showing any fatigue, and that's excellent. Um, the damp chaser, if we installed it, would protect all of those. Uh, I understand the instrument is uh, like your grandma's piano. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, to have that many generations on the same bench is pretty unique. Um, there's uh, clicking on the A note that's undiagnosed. There's early let off, but not throughout the piano. So the, the the touch mechanism of the instrument is essentially a miniature catapult. You're shooting the hammer at the string and catching and reloading it. You need to be out of the way of the string or it has no room to ring. Um, and that firing of that catapult is called let off and it is accurately described as timing but it is easily described as distance. So how far from the string are you when you shoot the hammer? And in your case, we have let off that's pretty early, uh, especially going into the high end. And what that means for the musician is that when you're trying to play softly, you can't cross that great distance to activate the wire. And what it means for the tuner is that I'm trying to knock it into tune and I can't apply maximum force because the, the instrument lets off too early. And I can show you that this, I don't know how I'm going to get the angle on this. So let's see what hammer how far from the string that is when we stop having forward momentum. That's pretty far. Can't tell if I'm catching that or not. Um, and then down in the low end here, the mid range, it's not that far. So that's actually a pretty decent, you know, that's very close. Um, so Steinway doesn't have a measurement. Steinway says, uh, how close can you get it? and how humid was it when you did it. So we want it to be as close as possible without muting the wire. So that's kind of an elective um, down the road thing for the piano, but it may explain some of this is really solid to play and it kind of feels like I'm playing into the air in some areas. Um, so that's an adjustment we could make later down the road. So as far as the tuning today, the piano was transposed. Definitely need another tuning no sooner than three weeks. There's no reason not to play. You're not going to hurt it, but you're definitely going to hear it sagging and twisting. Um, the next tuning will probably have some settling as well, but not nearly as much. And then we probably, even if it's not perfect, we probably wait a little while and see how it does in the summer. So the piano takes three months to square to the floor after you move it. It's a 500, 450 pound instrument. And so when you move it, it twists to meet the foundation of the new house. Carnegie Hall has a stage that moves. The orchestra pit is not for the orchestra. Pick up your cello. Um, it's for the nine foot grand piano, which is holding 20 tons of pressure and took four hours to tune. So you don't move that piano, you move the room. Um, and then in, in non-Carnegie Hall concert settings, you see a metal tripod underneath the grand, and again, to minimize any twisting as it's relocated. So the piano takes three months to find the floor, and then a full year afterward to tell you what it thinks of the new location. So we have to see the piano when it is swollen with humidity and pins are at their best, wool is taking up the most space, the soundboard is swollen, then you have to see the compass of it on the other end of the season when it's at its driest and loosest. Uh, so that's the piano update. Please uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or concerns, and uh, I'm going to put your piano back together.